Hello friends, welcome to EPG Patshala. The module which we are going to discuss today is Convention on Biological Diversity 1992. The learning objectives of this module are why there was a need felt in the international platform to have a convention on biological diversity, what is biological diversity and what measures should be taken for the sustainable development and effective management and use of biological resources and in the end we are going to discuss in depth the strategic plan or the strategic policy that has been laid down under the convention on biological diversity for the years 2011 and 2000 till 2020. The biological resources of the earth are vital to the economic and social development of mankind. In the late 80s, their growing recognition that biological diversity is a global asset of tremendous value to present and future generations was realized. But at the same time, it was seen that the threat to species and ecosystem is increasing at an alarming speed which has never been as it is today. Extinction of species caused by human activities increased many folds and became a matter of concern. Thus, in 1992, the Rio Earth Summit was convened. But to understand the Convention on Biological Diversity, it is very, very apt or it is very necessary to understand what is biodiversity. So, to understand biodiversity, we can say that biodiversity includes the variety of all life on Earth. It also manifests itself at three levels. Number one, species diversity which refers to the number and kinds of living organisms. Number two, genetic diversity which refers to the genetic variations within a population of species. And number three, ecosystem diversity which is the variety of habitats, biological communities and ecological processes that occur in the biosphere. The biodiversity we see today is the outcome of over 3.5 billion years of evolutionary history, which was shaped by natural processes and increasingly by the influence of humans. Biodiversity forms the web of life of which we are all an integral part and upon which we are so fully dependent. Biological diversity is the natural biotic capital of the earth and it affects us all. Humanity drives its supplies of food, medicines, energy and many industrial products from biological resources. Moving on to the Convention on Biological Diversity, which is also known as CBD 1992, we can say that the CBD is one of the three conventions which was agreed by governments at the 1992 Rio Earth Summit. It is probably the most important uh, international agreement that has been ever adopted. It recognizes that setting social and economic goals for the use of biological resources and the benefits derived from genetic resources is central to the process of sustainable development and that this in turn will support conservation. Moving on to the history of the Convention on Biological Diversity, the United Nations Environmental Program, which is often known as UNEP, convened the ad hoc committee or the ad hoc working group of the experts on biological diversity in June 1987. The work of this committee was to explore the need for an international convention on biological diversity. In May 1989, it established the ad hoc working group of technical and legal experts to prepare an international legal instrument for the conservation and sustainable use of biological diversity. The experts were to take into account the need to share cost and benefits between developed and developing countries, as well as the ways and means to support innovation by local people. This means that biological diversity has to be taken into consideration along with the knowledge of the indigenous people. By February 1991, the ad hoc working group was renamed as the Intergovernmental Negotiating Committee. 
Its work culminated on 22nd May 1992 with the Nairobi Conference for the adoption of the agreed text of the Convention on Biological Diversity. The convention was open for signature on 5th June 1992 at the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development, which is commonly or popularly known as the Rio Earth Summit. It remained open for signatures until 4th June 1993, by which time it had received 168 signatures. The convention entered into force on 29th December 1993, which was 90, 90 days after the 30th ratification, as it has been mentioned in the convention. The first session of the Conference of the Parties was scheduled for 28 November to 9 December 1994 in the Bahamas. The Convention on Biological Diversity was inspired by the world community's growing commitment to sustainable development. It represents a dramatic step forward in the conservation of biological diversity, the sustainable use of its components and the fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising from the use of genetic resources. The objectives of the convention, which are very, very important to understand, have been laid down in Article 1 of the convention. The convention, while reaffirming sovereign rights of nations over their biological resources, establishes three main goals. Number one, the conservation of biological diversity, which is very, very necessary for the well-being of the humans. Number two, the suitable use of components of biological resources, that is, sustainable development has to be promoted in order to utilize the resources judiciously in the present time and conserve the same for the future generations. Number three, fair and equitable sharing of the benefits arising out of the utilization of genetic resources. There are certain important definitions that have been laid down in Article 2 of the Convention. To study a few of them, biological diversity, as per the Convention on Biological Diversity 1992 means, the variability among living organisms from all sources, including terrestrial, marine, and other aquatic ecosystem, and the ecological complexes of which they are a part. This includes diversity within species, between species, and ecosystem. Biological resources include genetic resources, organisms or parts thereof, populations, or any other biotic component of ecosystems with actual or potential use or value for humanity. This means that all those resources which serve a purpose of human beings or which are useful for human beings in one or the other way will be counted as biological resources. Biotechnology means any technological application that uses biological systems, living organisms or derivatives thereof to make or modify products or processes for specific use. In the Convention on uh, Biological Diversity 1992, Domesticated or cultivated species means species in which the evolutionary process has been influenced by humans to meet their needs. Ecosystem means a dynamic complex of plant, animals, and microorganism, community, and their non-living environment interacting as a functional unit. The convention defines ex situ uh, conservation as the conservation of components of biological diversity outside their natural habitats. Whereas, in situ condition means conditions where genetic resources exist within ecosystem and natural habitats, and in the case of domesticated or cultivated species, in the surroundings where they have developed their distinctive properties, where ex situ conservation have been Components growing outside their natural habitats in situ cons conservation means or in situ conditions means inside their natural habitat in their uh, natural belongings. Habitat means the place or type of site where an organism or population naturally occurs. Protected area means a geographical defined area which is designated or regulated and managed to achieve specific conservation objectives. 
in the end sustainable use means the use of components of biological diversity in a way and at a rate that does not lead to the long term decline of biological diversity thereby maintaining its potential to meet the needs and aspirations of present and future generation sustainable use is the crux of the convention on biological diversity lastly in the definition portion technology includes biotechnology moving on to the principles of cbd laid down on article 3 the principles laid down are number 1 states have sovereign right to exploit their own resources pursuant to their own environmental policies it means that all states are free to use their natural resources in a way which the national legislation of a particular state permits them to do so the second principle in the cbd is states have responsibility to ensure that activities within their jurisdiction or control do not cause damage to the environment of other states or of areas beyond the limits of natural jurisdiction so this means that principles of cbd lays down the rights as well as obligation on the states article 5 of the cbd convention defines cooperation it says that each contracting party shall as far as possible and as appropriate cooperate with each other for the conservation and sustainable use of biological diversity it is also stated in article 5 that this cooperation can be either bilateral or multilateral number 3 it says that even international organizations play a very important role and where states or the contracting parties deem it fit and appropriate they may ask the international inst uh, institutions on matters of mutual interest to arrange for cooperation since international organizations have most of the members as their member states the obligations of the states are laid down in article 6 of the cbd the obligations are number 1 develop national strategies plans or programs for the conservation and sustainable use of biological diversity or adapt for this purpose existing strategies plans or programs which shall reflect the measures set out in this convention relevant to the contracting party concerned and number 2 the obligations of the states are to integrate as far as possible and appropriate the conservation and sustainable use of biological diversity into relevant sectoral or cross sectoral pr plans programs and policies it means that the convention on biological diversity has time and again in various articles have spoken about in cooperation between the states in order to bring about sustainable use of the biodiversity in article 7 identification and monitoring process has been laid down it says that enhancing knowledge and understanding of biological diversity and the impacts on it are important measures addressed in the convention signatories are required to identify and monitor important ecosystems species and genetic components of biological diversity as well as process and activities that have or are likely to have significant adverse impacts on biological diversity so it means that they have to identify such kind of impacts which may have adverse impacts on the biological diversity it also further says that countries are then able to determine their priorities with regard to conservation and sustainable use measures which need to be undertaken if there is identification and monitoring of the issues which have significant impact on the biodiversities moving on article 8 and 9 of the convention on biodiversity speaks about in situ and ex situ conservation in situ conservation is the conservation of ecosystem natural habitats and species in their natural surroundings as we have discussed already in the definition portion signatories are required to give emphasis to in situ conservation through a broad range of actions include which includes establishment and management of protected areas conservation and suitable use of biological resources within and outside protected areas 
promotion of environmentally sound and sustainable development in areas adjacent to protected areas, rehabilitation and restoration of degraded ecosystem, control of alien species and genetically modified organisms. Here it says that it is the need of the R that we should do the establishment and management of the uh, uh, ecosystem and conserve the ecosystem by providing a natural habitat to the different species. It also says that protection of threaten threatened species and populations and regulation of damaging processes and activities have to be taken into consideration. While the convention emphasizes the importance of in situ conservation, it also acknowledges that ex, ex situ measures also have an important role to play. Ex situ uh, conservation means conservation outside natural habitats, for example, in zoos, botanic gardens, and seed banks. Parties are to take ex situ measures while ensuring that ecosystems and natural populations of species are not threatened. Moving on, conservation and sustainable use of bio di biological diversity as laid down in the convention. An overreaching objective of the CBD is encouraging the conservation and sustainable use of the components of biological diversity. The CBD requires parties to integrate considerations relating to conservation and sustainable use into national decision making. This has been very very aptly laid down in article 10 of the convention. Moving for forward, Article 10b of the Convention says that it requires its party to adopt measures relating to the use of biological resources to avoid or minimize adverse impacts on biological diversity. Article 6b of the Convention states, parties are encouraged to integrate the conservation and sustainable use of biological diversity into relevant sectoral or cross-sectoral pro programs, plans and policies. As laid down in Article 7c, another measure for conservation and sustainable development of biological di diversity have been laid down making the parties responsible for identifying the process and categories of activities that have or are likely to have significant adverse effect on biological diversity and it has to be monitored in order to find out their effect on the biological diversity. Moving further, there have been provisions for assess and the fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising from the utilization of genetic resources. The CBD encourages the parties to provide access to and to equitably share the benefits arising from the utilization of genetic resources. As also, the CBD seeks to establish incentives to conserve biodiversity. The CBD approach is first of all based on the fundamental premise that nation sta states have sovereign rights over the biological diversity within their territory. The CBD also recognizes that national governments have the authority to determine access to these resources in accordance with national legislation as laid down in Article 15, Subclause 1. It provides that access to genetic resources must be obtained with the prior informed consent of the CBD parties and on mutually agreed terms. It has been clearly laid down in Article 15, Subclause 4 and 5. The CBD also says that the use of legal measures that could feasibly inclu include IPRs by calling on parties to take legislative, administrative or policy measures to ensure the benefits arising from research, development and commercial use of genetic resources are shared in an equitable way with the provider of the genetic resources. The conference of the parties this is, that is often or commonly known as COP has been established or has established a number of subsidiary bodies to consider assess and benefit sharing. First, it has established a panel of experts on assess and benefit sharing whose role is to develop a common understanding of basic concepts and to explore all options for assess and benefit sharing on mutually agreed terms including guiding principles, guidelines and codes of best practice for assess and benefit sharing managements.
The convention also talks about capacity building through research and training. It says that effective global action requires the expansion of national capacities, particularly in developing countries, for the conservation and sustainable use of biological diversity. In this regard, the convention provides for national and international action on research, training, the exchange of public information, and scientific and technical cooperation with emphasis on building national capa capabilities through human resource development and institutional building. Provisions for encouraging public understanding of the significance of biological diversity and the measures required for its conservation are also included in the CBD. Technology transfer of this and other pertinent information is an important aspect of ensuring the convention meets its objective. There has been an institutional arrangement that has been laid down clearly in the CBD. CBD under Article 23 says that there should be a conference of the parties which is the key decision making body responsible for monitoring implementation of the convention and has a major role in funding matters. Signatories are required to submit reports on measures taken for the implementation of the convention and their effectiveness in meeting the objectives of the convention to the conference of the parties. Further, in Article 25, another institutional arrangement has been mentioned, that is, the subsidiary body on scientific, technical and technological advice. It is to provide the conference of the parties with advice relating to the implementation of the convention, including the status of biological diversity and the effectiveness of measures taken to give effect to the convention. It also has a major role in identifying technologies for the conservation and sustainable use of biological diversity suitable for transfer to developing countries. CBD lays down a very comprehensive proce procedure for the settlement of dispute if it arises between the member states. Article 27 on, of the Convention on Biological Diversity, 1992, says that in the event of a dispute between contracting parties concerning the interpretation or application of this convention, the parties concerned shall seek solution by negotiation. If the parties concerned cannot reach agreement by negotiation, they may jointly seek the good office of or request mediation by a third party. The party can also resort to compulsory dispute settlement mechanisms as arbitration or submission of the dispute to the International Court of Justice. This means that the Convention on Biological Diversity talks about the peaceful as well as compulsory methods of dispute settlement. Moving on, the Convention on Biological Diversity 1992 was further taken forward by the two, court, two uh, protocols to the CBD. They are the Cartagena Protocol and the Nagoya Protocol. The Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety to the Convention on Biological Diversity is an international treaty governing the movement of living modified organisms, which are also known as LMOs, resulting from modern biotechnology from one country to another. It was adopted on 29 January 2000 as a supplementary agreement to the Convention on Biological Diversity and entered into force on 11 September 2003. The protocol seeks to protect biological diversity from the potential risk posed by living modified organisms resulting from modern biotechnology. It establishes an advanced informed agreement that is also known as AIA procedure for ensuring that countries are provided with the information necessary to make informed decision before agreeing to the import of such organisms into their territory. The protocol contains reference to precautionary and reaffirms the precaution language in principle 15 of the Rio Declaration on Environment and Development. The protocol also establishes a biosafety clearinghouse to facilitate the exchange of information on living modified organisms and to assist countries in the implementation of the protocol. Moving on to the second protocol, that is Nagoya Protocol, 
the Nagoya protocol on access to genetic resources and the fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising from their utilization to the Convention on Biological Diversity is a supplementary agreement to the Convention on Biological Diversity. It provides a transparent legal framework for the effective implementation of one of the three objectives of the CBD. That is, the third objective, that is the fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising out of the utilization of genetic resources. The Nagoya Protocol on ABS was adopted on 29th October 2010 in Nagoya, Japan and entered into force on 12th October 2014, that is the 90th, 90, 90th days after the deposit of the 50th instrument of ratification. Its objective is the fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising from the utilization of gen genetic resources, thereby contributing to the conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity. The Nagoya Protocol acts, uh, sets out core obligations for its contracting parties to take measures in relation to access to genetic resources, benefit sharing and compliance. The Nagoya Protocol addresses traditional knowledge associated with genetic resources with provisions on assess, benefit sharing and compliance. It also addresses genetic resources where indigenous and local communities have the established right to grant assess to them. Contracting parties are to take measures to ensure these com communities prior informed consent and fair and equitable benefit sharing keeping in mind community laws and procedures as well as customary use and exchange. This means that the Nagoya Protocol talks about the benefit sharing between the state and the indigenous people who have the knowledge or the firm knowledge about the genetic resources. Moving forward, the United Nations decade of biological diversity is very important to be mentioned here. The United Nations General Assembly at its 65th session declared the period that is from 2011 to 2020 to be the United Nations decade on biodiversity with a view to contributing to the implementation of the strategic plan for biodiversity for the period 2011 to 2020 by resolution 65th oblique 161. The United Nations Decade on Biodiversity will serve to support the implementation of the Strategic Plan for Biodiversity and promotes its overall vision of living in harmony with nature. Its goal is to mainstream biodiversity at different levels. Throughout the United Nations Decade on Biodiversity, governments are encouraged to develop, implement and communicate the results of national strategies for implementation of the strategic plan for biodiversity. Moving on, we will discuss the key elements of the strategic plan of 2011-2020. The first key element of this plan is rationale. The rationale for the new plan is that biological diversity underpins ecosystem, functioning and the provisions of ecosystem services essential for human well-being. It provides for food, security, human health, the provisions of clean air and water. It contributes to local livelihood and economic development and is essential for the achievement of the Millennium Development Goals, including poverty reduction. The second key element of this strategic plan is vision. The vision for the new plan is living in harmony with nature, whereby 2050, biodiversity is valued, conserved, restored, and wisely used, maintaining ecosystem services, sustaining a healthy planet, and delivering benefits essential for all people. The third key element is mission, which says that the mission of the new plan is to take effective and urgent action to halt the loss of biodiversity in order to ensure that by 2020, ecosystems are resilient and continue to provide essential services, thereby securing the planet's variety of life and contributing to human well-being and poverty eradication. To ensure this, pressures on biodiversity are reduced, ecosystems are restored, biological resources are sustainably used, and benefits arising out of 
utilization of genetic resources are shared in a fair and equitable manner. Adequate financial resources are provided. Capacities are enhanced. Biodiversity issue and values mainstreamed. Appropriate policies are effectively implemented. And decision making is based on sound science and the precautionary approach. The fourth key element of the strategic plan of 2011-2020 is the implementation of the above three key elements. And for implementation, the means for implementation primarily is the activities at the national or sub-national level with supporting action at the regional and global levels. It also provides for strategies and provisions of financial resources in accordance with respective obligations under the convention, taking into account Article 20 of the convention. After going through the Convention on Biological Diversity and understanding its objectives and principles, we have seen that it is the first international treaty which talks about conservation and sustainable use of the biological resources. It is also a convention which has comprehensively laid down the conditions for monitoring and implementation for the judicious use of the biodiversity resources. Biodiversity resources and the knowledge of the indigenous people are the important assets of one nation and it's, it is owned exclusively by the people of that nation. So it is the responsibility of the international community to see and monitor that these resources or biodiversity resources are not used or exploited or illegally or in an unauthorized way used by any other nation. It is also the duty of the nation itself to see and monitor that these biodiversity resources are used in judicious manner within the country as well. Thank you.